The King's arrival in Italy. At the airfield, to meet His Majesty was the Commander-in-Chief, General Alexander. The visit had been kept a close secret, and it came as a complete and happy surprise to the troops when they realized who was in the car flying the royal pennant. The King began his second day with a motor launch tour of the Great Harbour of Naples, accompanied by Admiral Sir John Cunningham, Commander-in-Chief of the Mediterranean Fleet. His Majesty was greatly impressed by the thoroughness with which the damage inflicted on the port by the retreating enemy had been cleared away. An imposing collection of ships, the Navy and the Merchant Service in splendid array. Men of the Royal Marines form a guard of honour for the King's return. A brilliant sun shining down on white uniforms in this majestic scene framed in Naples Harbour. Fifth Army Americans are to be seen sharing in this honoured occasion. The King goes aboard a British cruiser. The whole splendid sight is vividly portrayed in these pictures. The diary of the King's activities brings us now to a caravan in the plains of Umbria where His Majesty spent two days among the men of that magnificent fighting force, the 8th Army. Its commander, General Oliver Lees, points out heights still held by the Germans on the opposite hillside. A royal investiture in the field, the King comes among his troops to perform a moving ceremony. Captain Richard Wakeford receives the ribbon of the Victoria Cross. Fusilier Francis Jefferson receives the same award at the hands of his sovereign. General Oliver Lees is given the accolade of knighthood. On the field of battle, this is a simple, almost informal ceremony. Later, His Majesty visited representative troops of the Polish Corps, which had given such an unforgettable account of itself on the eastern sector of the Italian front. He was conducted by their commander, General Anders. Advance airfield, he meets South African airmen. Routine operations were in progress at the time, and His Majesty, with obvious interest, followed the plans of attack over maps in the briefing room. It is fitting that we should end with His Majesty's own words to his troops. I pray that the day is not too far distant when I shall be able to welcome you home again. <laughs> <laughs>